Hey everybody, we are back with part two. Yes, I know you've been actually waiting and I'm here to just wow you with my thinking. I was back on 1984 and I was basically saying it really wasn't a global societal discussion. It really only consisted of 20% of the population. And the rest of the world might have been just freaking happy. Who knows? <clears throat> now let's go on into what I was saying today with modern politics. And I don't even care about modern politics because I spend more of my time thinking about the modern world to which modern politics is just a fevered delusion held by a tiny percentage of the world's population. Um as they ignore data. Now, what I've told people, and some people seem to think this is pessimistic, is that we really only have about the time of one human lifespan left to live the way we do now. Yeah, oh wow, yeah, it's scary, I know. No, it's not, I'm just saying the way we live, do now. Uh, I'll, I'll make a, a statement. Uh, if you live in a house with running water, uh, internet connection, and a bank account, and a refrigerator, you are in the top 20th percentile of the world's population. Congratulations. Um, so when, when one can think about the end of the world, you really have to think about the end of life as someone knows it. But then you'd have to think about the end of life as you know it at what level of existence. So when I look at things in the United States or in Europe, all I see is the end of life at that level of existence which is hardly a global level of existence. I mean, the, the, they'd like to think that this is a world spanning, that everybody in the freaking world is as wasteful and arrogant and useless as the populations of the, quote, first world, end quote, countries. But it is not. And by any standpoint, I mean, the U.S., is three to five percent of the world's population consuming 15 to 20 percent of the world's resources to maintain an obviously unsustainable lifestyle will it come to an end obviously yes when and how because it's unsustainable and it will simply collapse in on itself like the house of cards that it is and that includes europe is that the end of the world? No, that's the end of their world. Um, and we see it all around. So, is this magical prophecy? I don't see it that way. I just see it as a reasonable interpretation of data. We look at the world's fisheries, the oceans, and um, we think, I think, oh, I'm going to just, I'm pulling numbers out of my head now, 80% of the world's fisheries are in poor condition right now, the estimate that, the, that at the current use, uh, they'll be emptied by 2050, yeah, the oceans will be emptied, I mean, you can think you can't really uh, fish farm. It's 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 actually kind of funny because um, there's this thing we like to call conservation of energy, and you you animals need animal protein um, of the same amount of energy that it needs for them to survive. The only 
uh, life on this planet that creates its own energy is plant life. Animal life does not. Animal life is inherently pseudo-cannibalistic in nature. It can only survive on other animal life, consuming and burning other animal life to convert it into itself. And with the conservation of energy, you cannot, uh, <laughs> you need the same amount of caloric energy to live. And that means you need to consume the equivalent amount of other animal life, if you're mostly a meat eater, to, to, to do that. And fish um, mostly are in many ways. So they actually feed them like shrimp and, and other amounts of animal protein. And as you get to growing more fish farms, you actually run into this problem that you need then other fish farms to feed the fish or shrimp farms or krill farms or whatever to feed the fish their animal proteins uh, to stay alive. <sighs> and um, it becomes unsustainable again. So, so long fisheries. Phosphates. What's a phosphate? What's a phosphate, did you just ask me? Okay, I'll tell you. Phosphate, as you may know, it is called fertilizer. Fertilizer that we need to grow food. All food that we really do on the mass corporate levels that we grow it at. And at the current use of phosphates, they will be gone within a hundred years. You know what that means? No food. Well, not no food, but just the food that is able to grow naturally, which guess what is less than five to 10% of what's consumed. So <sighs> time to diet. And um, yeah, there's another fun fact for you. Everything on this planet is either grown or mined. We are in a closed loop system. Everything is grown or mined. We pull it out of the ground or we grow it out of the ground, but it's here. Nothing new is being created. It's just being transformed. We use phosphates to grow food. We pull that out of the ground. It's a finite resource. Ah. <clears throat> so let's go into the big ones. I'm going to save the best ones for last. Oil, petroleum products. Obviously, everybody knows that's unsustainable. We just do, right? I mean, do I have to explain that to anybody? We, we, we guess we have about now adding the new shale oil sands. Um, <clears throat> we have about, what, 70 years of um, gas, as we understand it, 80 years of oil left. As I said, pretty much one human lifespan left for the world as we know it. Let's keep going. I mean, and those are, those are the positive things. Those are all considering a static world. Let's consider the dynamic world. Climate change. Yeah, and if you're one of those people who are going to come and tell me that climate change doesn't exist, uh, go back to your QAnon flat earth channels and freaking enjoy. I don't need to converse with you. Um... We don't have a clue what climate change is going to do. The world, we have entire supercomputers, multiple supercomputers linked together in an effort of just to try to figure out what the weather will be over the next seven days, much less climate. This doesn't mean that we don't know it's changing. Just this means that it is far too complicated for us to figure out what the actual global effects will be, but they will be huge. California is on fire. Australia is on 
fire and will be every year. Enjoy. Um, what else? Best for last, right? Population growth. Let's look at the numbers. In 1918, the time of the last pandemic, two and a half million people died over three plus years. 500 and something thousand people died in the United States alone in that time. The global population was about two billion people. Here we are, 102 years later. And we're at 200,000 dead in the first eight months. Uh, Two million dead globally. And the world population is about eight billion people. Yes, in 102 years, the global population is four times as much. Let me break that down to you in simplistic terms. It took the entire history of the human species to get to two billion people. It took a hundred years to go from two billion to eight billion. <sighs> do I have to explain it? Logarithmic growth, do I need to explain it? Do I need to actually say that it's not sustainable? That cannot continue? Okay, then I will. That cannot continue. It's over. In the next hundred years, on the logarithmic growth, there will be not 16, but 34 billion people if you assume that society can maintain the growth levels that it is happening now. 34 billion people. Which would mean, at that level of consumption growth rate, as I said, those other 80 and 70 and 50 years for the fishes and, and, and 100 years for the phosphates, you're going to have to readjust that to the real uh, logarithmic growth rate of the population. Those numbers now drop significantly down to 50 years or less. significantly shorter than the average human lifespan at this time. Um, now, one thing that this little cult known as economists like to say is, what about technology? Technology will save us. Smart people will come and show us the way to the future. We're too stupid, but we know smart people can figure it out. No, why? Because smart people have already said the digital age is over. What? Did you just say the digital age is over? We're using computers, what are you talking about? No, it's done. Let me explain to you how this works. The average CPU and computer chip has been over doubling its processing power every two years for the last 30, 40 years. That is done. We have reached the technological limit to how small we can make computer chips. We have hit the hard limit on computer processing power. But data and computer use 
can expand for as much as it wants. Data is increasing at an insane rate. We love collecting data, but the processing power to manipulate that data, to sort through that data, we've maxed out. Computer graph, you see, software and programming is virtual. That can continue to develop. And nowadays, as opposed to programming 30 or 40 years ago, we are just gluttons. Back then, we had limited amounts of space and we had to cram everything in to make our code as efficient as possible due to limited processing and limited uh, storage. But now, we look at unlimited storage, so software is the equivalent of a gas hog. We just don't care. When people go out to make a software, it just assumes that computing power and memory are infinite. Just go crazy on your uh, programming design. Sky's the limit, but it's not. Um, so as software and graphics and everything continues to become more processing intensive, processors are not keeping up. Yeah, they're not. This might be getting complicated for some people and you're falling asleep, but basically what I'm saying is we're at the end of the digital age. Computers are not going to continually get stronger. They, we've pretty much maxed it out now, and they're trying to find ways and tricks to um, have computer chips self-configure themselves so that they can focus their processing power on the tasks at hand instead of use, do, use, doing all things uh, equally importantly. So if you're, uh, never mind, we're not there yet, but that's their answer that they think, and they've already spent billions of dollars on trying to figure this out because we're not going to get stronger computer chips. This means that digital um, inventions, innovations, instead of coming out dozens a year, are going to come out less and less and less and less and less because the digital age is effectively over in 2020. Sorry if you imagined some Star Trek level supercomputers running around. It's not going to happen. It's not. We're not just going to keep on getting more and more processing power. It's just not. So, for these reasons, I enjoyed 40K 30 years ago because I was already looking at that then, and I did. nothing has dissuaded me from my opinions now. So what do I think of politics? I don't care because they are totally disconnected from reality. So who the fuck cares about Trump or whoever, Biden or, or uh, prime ministers or governments or royals or economies or markets because they are all so disconnected from reality that they're effectively playing an RPG and thinking it's the real world, from my perspective. Um, I see a world more along the lines of, like I said, uh, Brave New World, Gattaca, 3%, um, if you watch that on Netflix, fun shit, uh, coming about shortly, but the problem is that all of those levels start at the first world level. Oh, 200. You see, I have to just cherry pick aspects of these different stories. They're not, none of them are completely right. They're all about like 10 to 15% right. But if you take that 10% and slap uh, all together, you get a pretty accurate vision of the world that's to come, which I will talk about in part three. See you then. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>